a big misconception here among a lot of people is you're going to get your regular foam or air pad really doesn't matter you're going to put this on top of your silver reflect and your body energy it, it bounces your body heat back to you welcome to specs bug out survivor i've got an array of silver reflectix and foam mats and there's a big misconception to how these work i'm going to show you how manufacturers are using um, thermal dynamic science and these mats have changed over the years so this is the first example here's another this is hdf it takes a lot longer to dissipate energy with this being thin it takes less time to dissipate energy this is only rated for about two seasons but I have massive success with this little cheap thing I don't know why and finally there's this here so which is going to work better the pitted silver reflect the bubble or just the silver back which my knees are on here now a big misconception here among a lot of people is you're going to get your regular foam or air pad really doesn't matter the theory goes that your body obviously dissipates heat and this obviously will slow that dissipation of heat down it reaches the silver and then bounces that energy back into your mat unfortunately that's a myth it doesn't work like that but it will not reflect heat back unless there is an air gap a clear gap put in tin foil behind your radiators to reflect the heat back you don't actually put that tin foil onto the radiator like that it has to be on the wall with your radiator here and it bounces the heat back so it's not hitting the brick behind your tin foil so if we can imagine that now that the radiator in your room it has a gap it bounces the heat back instead of going onto the wall in this scenario the wall is going to be the ground the um, tin foil on the wall is going to be replicated by some of this silver here and the radiator in this instance is your body you are the energy you are the warm bit all we're trying to do is slow down that dissipation of heat because the cold sucks energy like that and all we want to do is slow it down and if without a gap like this where the foam is in direct contact with the silver there's nothing to bounce that heat it needs to be separated with a clear gap so manufacturers knew this and came up with this alternative so let's see why this would work in here is called an egg crate here where I can put my finger into these indentations here some are raised and some are hollow the indentations that are lower are reflective it it bounces the energy back the radiant energy remember I'm the radiant energy and all this is doing is bouncing back radiant energy so already camping manufacturers know this and have created this and I like this it works for me and I don't know why it's not working for others because I'm a cold sleeper that's going in my top 10 perhaps 
So it's a really weird one as it? someone who's always cold because it's not a warm day now, I'm in a t-shirt, but I'm making myself a little chilly on purpose just to demonstrate um, which works for me at least. Okay, what about something like this? This has air bubbles in and the air bubbles give that few millimetres of air. I do have another bit of silver mat which I think was from Highlander and it's mummy shaped and it doesn't have any indentation to it, it doesn't have any air to it, it's never going to radiate. Somebody also asked can it be done with a hammock and boy have I been testing that. Now I, I use under quilts personally but I understand that not everyone wants to pay that much money on an underquilt, even though I've shown some budget alternatives, which are quite good. On a different video, I will share with you a little trick we can do with some of these in a hammock. And somebody suggested putting this under your sleeping bag directly, directly under your sleeping bag, so I'm lying on it but not bare skinned, never, never lie bare skinned on that. All it is, is cold. So I've had moderate success with that. Any element of my body that is touching this was cool. Anywhere on my body where there's a gap was warm. If you picture your back looking down, on my spine here is an in indentation like that with the top of the apex where my fingers are would be my backbone. See that hollow there and either side here is where the back muscles are. Where my spine is would be quite nice and warm because there's a gap and it's reflecting into that hollow space gap. The bits that were touching directly onto the silver which obviously either side of my back muscles my glutes you know my bum cheeks just um, wasn't cold but not as warm as that any part of my body that isn't in direct contact so the way you achieve the air gap is buy something that creates the air gap with silver reflector on it in my experience this has worked incredibly well egg crate incredibly well is the bubble but for me this it really makes no difference okay I'm back indoors as you can see get out that cold because all this is something you need to be doing and researching well in advance of going out because a lot of people are just going to buy some kind of foam pad some kind of reflective trust in the fact it works get out there and you're scratching your head what am i doing wrong i'm going to lay this foam on top of that silver 50 percent and nothing under the the other and although it, i will feel a little benefit it that benefit can be supplemented greatly with an air gap so i'm not saying it doesn't work okay so i'm going to repeat that because there's always people who put the fingers in their ears and tell me i'm wrong so i'm going to repeat that i'm not saying this doesn't work i'm saying let's see if we can supplement this by the air gap my left foot is directly on the pad. My right foot has the silver back reflector under it. Yeah, my right foot that is on the silver is evidently a little warmer. It, and it is little. I want it to be noticeable. Now let's create an air gap. For the air gap, I'm gonna use the bubble. I'll just stand here for a few seconds. That is noticeable. The change incorporating the air gap it is noticeable yeah 
and this like I said is an experiment you can do just like this just find a cold bit of uh, ground these tiles are cold and replicate it it's simple so you don't even need to take my word for it you, you can try this for yourself but incorporating an air gap is the key these sun shields for your car windscreen are not a lot of money at all at all probably cheaper than this the close cell foam with a very poor reflective value there and the reflectors actually peeling off there now you can see with mine taped it down the back and made it wider to fit a hammock every time you lie in it it creases like this and like this and like this like a wave as you lie on it in a hammock and this wave can you see that what's happening underneath it's creating these voids and that is where cold is coming in and this void here is where heat is escaping so can i use pads in a hammock now there is a video coming up on how i have managed to overcome that issue and it works amazingly well i'm going to put up my hammock and i think i'll get my bomb pod <laughs> So the reason why this little pod works is because the insulation below me is not pressed up against my skin. There's a gap. So here's my insulation, bottom of my hammock, and you can see there's a, a clear gap even when it's zipped up. Now I can put a silver reflector in and that will radiate. Remember. The way radiation works is the heat source is away with an air gap and it bounces onto the silver and pushes the energy back. Having it in direct contact is a bit like people who want to get the sun on the face has that bit of silver and they bounce the energy and you get the radiation from the sun like that, give you a tan. If I had that silver and just stuck it on my face I'm never gonna get a tan you, you've got to bounce it now people who put silver behind radiators exactly the same thing you don't put it on the radiator you put it on the wall you make the gap I can reach my arm over and start moving that radiant um, reflector where I need it. I can increase the thermal value with any kind of silver at all, whether it's bubble, tin foil, uh, the CCF blue one there, the egg crate, anything that's reflective, anything at all. But what about dissipation? How does that work? dissipation is how slow or fast energy is absorbed and then lost through something like this which is your sleeping bag or your sleeping pad the thicker it is the longer it takes for your body energy to escape now here's what sleeping bag manufacturers don't tell you they produce their sleeping bags to have a dissipation of about eight hours in winter you and me both know you could be in this little sack here for 12 hours so you do need to add as much extra value as you can the longer you're in your bag the less efficient they work and the same goes for your pad the thinner your pads are 
it doesn't keep that energy in for as long now I have tried my pads at minus three it was last November and I put one pad on top of the other which is better but it wasn't perfect at all was not perfect I kind of stay away from foam once it goes below zero I find foam has very little benefit below zero in my experience unless I add in an air gap and reflect through the air gap onto the pads then I might be able to get away with just one pad let's see if I can increase its dissipation rate polyester then a layer of HDF then reflect it so what I've done in effect there is make my sleeping bag thicker I've made it thicker with the HDF foam so I have a longer dissipation rate instead of the eight hours that sleeping bag manufacturers give sleeping bags I probably got 12 so I've added about four hours you're gonna be in that bag a lot longer than eight hours so yeah I am gonna bring a slightly bigger pad I am going to bring an air reflective rather than a, a flat silver reflective which we spoke about earlier I have been asked a few times now can I just use pads be it foam or air or a combination of both in a hammock put your sleeping bag on mm, yes and no if you roll about a lot you tend to roll away from your pad and it doesn't wrap around your shoulders or anything so you're relying solely on a sleeping bag to keep your shoulders warm and your knees warm and I just roll about too much so if I strip this pod off and just put my HDF foam pad straight in the hammock I'll show you the issues and on another video I'll show you the solution so let's take the pod off get the HDF foam in and even um, the reflector so this might be the setup you thought of hammock a thick HDF pad and a reflective under it remember my reflective does have the air gap with the bubbles so that is going to work let's get in and see what the issues are of doing this I'm laying on it these are the flutes that happen when you lay directly on the mat in a hammock this gap here the silver reflector is very very slick so I'm trying to get on the diagonal because I know you guys like a diagonal light and I am slipping everywhere so if you are like me and you want this to work better you don't want it to slip about and you do want a better thermal um, efficiency to your system you want to do it on the cheap because you don't want the expense buying an under quilt what I'll do is take one pad out one reflective a hammock and we need to get this working and there is a method so on the cheap it can be done the great thing with this egg crate is you've got the HDF air which stops it moving about now I can't put bare skin onto this I would lose a lot of thermal efficiency I need to be in the sleeping bag with the sleeping bag touching this I don't want to be in direct contact with any silver whatsoever that will have an adverse effect trying to get something that works both in the trees and on the ground it is a harder job than you think and I know there are pads out there which can do the job and I've tried them and I'm not impressed that's why I tend to have under quilts for hammocks and pads for tents whether it's foam whether it's an air pad 
whether it's a combination of the both. So a quick recap, I can put the foam down onto this foam backed silver reflector. There'll be no radiant heat bounce back there because there's no air gap. So instead I would bring in something like this, an air pad. Now when I put the air pad down onto the foam backed silver reflector, it has some air. If what I have is a piece of foam like this, I would introduce it to a reflective that has air bubbles. In both these examples, the radiant heat reflector has been rolled inside. So join me soon and we'll take the hammock out, a HDF pad and a reflective and we can see if we can sort a lot of problems out. So until then take care of yourself and I'll see you out there. Happy trails.